Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the micro bullish scenario where we're looking for a double one two and eventually continuation to the upside. The problem in this scenario, however, is that the second wave one and the second wave two of a lower degree are much bigger in price and time compared to the higher degree wave one and two. And usually the higher degree wave one and two are longer in price and time, as most commonly you're going to see some sort of a diagonal in a one, two, one, two, one, two, where each next wave one and wave two are shorter in time and price than the first wave one and two. But that is, of course, not the case, as you can see over here, lowering the probabilities of this scenario. In the second bullish scenario, we're looking at an expanding diagonal and then a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which in general is rare. Only if all other things fail, we can start to think about an expanding diagonal, where in this case, we then have a five wave structure, where preferably you're not going to see a zigzag to the upside and then a 5, 3, 5, where you at least want to want to want to be hit sitting at 35.5k. The invalidation for this scenario is price moving to the downside, hitting the invalidation at 34.3k. If we then look at this bearish scenario over here to the downside, I actually zoomed in to the 3 to 5 minute time frame of this move to the downside just to check if there is actually a count over here impulsively to the downside that does not have overlap with the high of wave 4 and then a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave structure. And behold, there is indeed a count on the 1 to 5 minute over here which does not show overlap with the high of this wave 4. Now usually I don't like to go to 5 minute time frame or lower but in this particular scenario we then have a one and a wave two over here at the high so one two three four and then you have an extended one two three four five to the downside where this is your low and then inside wave two you have a wave w being a flat x is a zigzag and then you have a zigzag to the upside in wave y as well so we have a w x y for then another wave one and continuation to the downside where now you can count this wave a to the downside impulsively and now it also makes sense while uh, when more locally over here we look at cvd divergences and everything that happened because throughout today i've been updating as well and of course when price was here we could potentially see continuation to the upside right but the moment we saw bearish CVD divergences over here and also to the downside that is when I started to check this price action over here and was like well I'm not feeling confident with that move towards the upside with the expanding diagonal to the upside that is rare double one two doesn't look good I'm trying to find scenarios to the downside and once I saw the weakness and the absorption here I was like okay let's have a look here and okay we actually have an impulsive scenario in a wave A for then a WXY in B W is a zigzag X zigzag flat in wave Y perfectly fine for B and then to the downside we're looking for a wave one two and then a bigger three to the downside where we're looking for wave C most common target area for C is between the 1 and the 1 1.236 which is then taken from the high to the low of A to the high of B sitting between 33.5k and 33k and then a bigger WXY flat zigzag zigzag to the downside very very nice indeed where also in this scenario we're going to take the double bottom here here and potentially also here to grab all that liquidity for that potentially a move to the upside because the bearish scenario is continuation and then a wave one two continuation to the downside in a way three for much lower prices to come if we then look at this bearish scenario not a, that big of a fan anymore mainly also because if we're looking for a wave b and then an abc flat most common target of b is between the 1.236 and 1.38 but if we look at the subdegree count of this wave b we have to look for a double zigzag which in general is not too common but also if you take a FIP from the low to the high of W to the low of X, most common target for Y is here between the 1 and the 1.236, which as you can see is below the wave B target area, which therefore doesn't really look that great. And that increases probabilities for scenarios that go down instead of moving up and then to the downside. If we look at the CVD divergences over here, bullish and bearish CVD divergences, the bullish one appeared first, then we had the bearish one. So generally, without this piece of price action over here, probabilities are higher for the bullish scenario to play out. But then we saw bearish absorption here as well, and bearish absorption here as well, more locally when price was moving to the downside. Yes, we also have some bullish ones, but it's more interesting to look at the three to five minute CVD divergences here, and they have now played out as this low over here got taken by price so this cvd played out this cvd also played out and this one only plays out the moment this low over here is taken and that is not yet the case 
on the CVD chart, it looks the following, where we have a lower high on price, higher high on blue, as well as on yellow over here. More locally, lower high on price, higher high on yellow. And throughout this move to the downside as well, constant bearish CVD, lower highs on price, but look, higher high yellow, higher high yellow, as well as on uh, blue over here. Constant absorption of market longs going on throughout this move towards the downside. So there's definitely some downside pressure. And if we then finally look at the probabilities of the different scenarios, then what I wrote over here on the lower time frame, if we zoom out, the probabilities in general are higher to eventually take the lows. Also, this move retraced very deep to the 886 in a potential 1, 2, and 3 continuation, which lowers the probabilities. This is a wave 2, increases that this is a wave B or a C for eventually more downside over here or in the scenario or bearish scenario potential wave a for downside but in general it increases probabilities for eventually a move to the downside the, bur uh, the bullish scenarios being an expanding structure over here and the double one two are not looking great which also even if price moves up increases probabilities we're still eventually going to see those lows taken which is and also what i wrote over here that hey the probabilities are higher to eventually see those lows taken even if price moves to the upside still looking for eventually a move towards the downside where we do have some support to at least keep into uh, account first of all the blue box here 34 3 34.5k and then finally this one here 33.8 to 33.9k and to the upside if price can get above this high over here then probability uh, probabilities will increase to move to the upside and then also potentially take that 36k high especially and this is important if price can go above the daily and potentially then switch that into support. So this is an important level of interest, price taking this high and also flip the daily probabilities for 36k. If price is going to take this low, probabilities become higher for lower prices to come. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion, which is the CVD. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing and I'd like to see you at the next one. Bye bye.